chicken. Welcome to another episode of Lolito's Pinoy Kitchen. <laughs> and today we are going to make uh it this is going to be very difficult to find if you're in the States or in Europe or you know not in Asia. What we're cooking with is something called the Ludal, known in Ilocano. Um what it is is what's called a taro stem. So if you're familiar with taro, um this is the stem of the plant. And these are relatively young. Uh, that these these are a little longer than usual. Does that mean that they're um, young yeah. or more mature? It's an, an, another variety of uh, the lutal, maybe. Oh, uh, okay. Um, does the length um, yeah. correspond to the maturity, or is it still rather no, young? And another class of the lutal. You know? Oh, okay. It's another class. Yeah. So we are going to make a recipe with this. Um, it's dad's special recipe, so um, we are going to mix uh, bagnet, which is uh, deep fried pork, and uh, some bitter gourd, and we're going to saute this. And it shouldn't take too long to cook, but this is the most arduous process, is really cleaning the stems. So the first step we have to do is the prep work, and this is the them. most difficult part, or the most time-consuming part. Because what you have to do is you have to split the membranes out. <laughs> Don't split them. Okay, let me make that very clear. Just split the skins, or the membrane, out of the each of the stems, and then you get this bit here. Um, the ludal kind of resembles asparagus, but... If you're going to cook this at home and you do not have the ludal, what I suggest or maybe what dad will suggest is you can use eggplant because uh, it will have the same texture once you uh, saute it. Once you saute it with the fried pork and the um, bitter melon gourd. We're also going to use um, bagong or shrimp paste and some tomatoes. So. This is the uh, first step, is really the prep work. The cooking itself should not take too long. How, how long would it take, Dad? Maybe 20 minutes. 20 minutes. to clean it. Yeah. So this is the most arduous part here, is that. Um, so once again, you know, the uniqueness of the recipe really comes from this local ingredient of taro stems. Um, if you're cooking it at home, you cannot find it. Maybe you can use eggplant. Um, it will help hold up well, but it might turn into mush. The nice thing about this is it does get really soft, but it doesn't turn into mush. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> with, so if that if you didn't have this at home, what could you make it with? Could you oh. use asparagus or could you use eggplant? I don't know. What Maybe does the master say? Oh, okay. Things. He's basically saying, yeah, you need to have some deludal on you. But... Once you get to the finished product, I think it'll give you an idea of what you could use instead if you don't have it. Yeah, it's Okay, Cousin Ben's first time. He's the dad's apprentice here to clean all this <laughs> daludal. And what he's finding is, what's your finding on this as you're um, splitting the membrane here? What'd you tell me? Mom! You know the, um, the mm -hmm. marungai? Yeah. You're fine out. No, mm -hmm. the, the Morunga in the States, I don't, it doesn't make me go to the bathroom. The one over here does. <laughs> no, it does. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you have to keep going and going. My mom's complete with that. It's, it's right. the most natural laxative in the world. Oh. A lot of people who doesn't make it. I think <laughs> it's the way how you cook it. You have to cook it. Uh, I don't know, some experts. It's like, you know how they have those... Uh, Poisonous fish, and they have those trained guys to do it. You mean the fugu? Yeah. Mm. It's like this. If you don't do it, cook it right. You're gonna have itchy damn throat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm on a roll here, man. I'm trying to. Mm-hmm. Do this damn thing. Okay. 
So the one thing he did say is that it kind of itches when it you. Does. This yeah. one itches. When you split the membrane. So when you eat it, there's a. If you eat a lot of it, you'll feel like this weird sort of sensation in your throat, like it it starts to get itchy, and then it you feel like it starts to grow roots within your like your throat. <laughs> So that's one of the more unique sensations of eating this Yeah, yeah there you go. That's how I feel. That's why. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it definitely will yeah, feel like um, it will definitely feel like you're growing roots in your throat. It's kind of like harsh and yeah. And, well, it doesn't last that long. No, 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 no. It's not long lasting. Yeah. First stage is complete. We've cut all the dalu dal and some bitter melon and it only took us, let me see, let me look at my watch. It took us almost two hours, yep. Two hours, I mean, meticulous cleaning and now we can get on to cooking. We got some old tomato with some bug net pieces simmering. Dad's just boiling some oh. of the bucknet or the crispy fried pork with some plum tomatoes. And you just, you just put in there plain water. Put them in there in a, for a few minutes and then what do we do? We wait for this to bubble, Dad? Just put the tomato first and take it out. Okay. <laughs> Now we've got that to a boil. I think uh, it's been in there for about 10 to 15 minutes, Dad? Yeah, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And it's time to add our taro stems or dalu dal. Mm, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. And so this will cook for about 10 more minutes, Dad? 20 minutes, maybe. 20 minutes in there? Yeah. Until they're about wilted, right? So right now they kind of look like they have the consistency of asparagus stalks. So you would want them to wilt almost to like um, cooked eggplant consistency, I think. And then the next step is to put the So some of that boiled tomato goes back down there at the top. Did you add your um, bagong yet? No. No. So we haven't added any seasoning just yet. Just, um, you know, glue dal, tomato, bitter melon, and uh, some of that bagnet. Will you be adding more bagnet here, Dad? No more. No more? <coughs> <coughs> That's all for me, uh, bagnet with the rest of me. That's the magic elixir of life that goes in there, which is shrimp paste or bagong. <coughs> and that supposedly makes it all better. So, in case you're worried about the pungency of bagong, it will lend like that kind of special salty flavor that you cannot put like your finger on. It doesn't taste um, fishy or shrimpy at all. It's just going to add very earthy savoriness. You can also use fish sauce, but Dad says bagong is the way to go. Uh, put in the shrimp paste so you have a higher concentration of that um, earthy, savory flavor. Now after 30 minutes of cooking, this is the final product. And um, one thing I forgot to mention is make sure you put some ginger at, at the beginning, right Dad? Yeah. So when you boil it with the bagnet and the tomato just like a little bit, and ginger. you want to put that ginger in there at the beginning and then you want to put it back in at the end. So it's only infused with the gingery taste.
And you can see here, those stalks look like really soft. They don't really look like asparagus. The only thing is, I think with asparagus, is after 30 minutes, it will wilt much faster. And you don't necessarily want that. Um, this looks like the right texture. And you see that it's reduced some, so then we can see our pork and around the top as well. So, as you can see, the proportion of pork to the wu dao um, yeah, is relatively low, but it's re you could actually eat bagnet with this if you like. So then you can have some of the pork that's lent the flavor into the broth and it's been reduced and it goes back into the dao and then uh, eat it with a uh, bagnet that has not been immersed in the dao mixture. Then, when? It's our dao in our bagnet. And of course bagnet you can eat it separately with this. And of course if you put some pork in there it blends all the flavor in the Deluda mix. So, now we need to dive in. Okay, time to try out the Deluda that Dad had cooked. Let's Wait, see if we get another hit. Get I'm gonna get some of the stalks here. Oh, some of the stalks are just fine. Stocks with some rice. Stocks with some rice. Sometimes if you cook this a little longer, it gets a little more um, goopier, like mushier. So then it kind of tastes, you can taste more of an eggplant mushroom sort of taste. Um, this one's a little more firm than usual. So it's kind of has, lends more of an asparagus stock kind of taste. Um, let me see. I mixed in a little bit of pork in there. Because, you know, you want to get a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, too. It actually has some bitter melon as well. So, and it comes on strong at the end as well. It's a nice, refreshing palate cleanser, that bitter melon. Oh, mm -hmm. there's like, like that. Yeah. So, you get that meat at the beginning. Um, lean cut of meat. And then with the mushroomy eggplant type of um, flavor. I think it's more of an asparagus stock kind of taste, to be honest, with uh, this doneness. And then finishes nice with the bitterness from the gourd. Not too much, just a nice thing just to cleanse the palate. It's nothing like um, that's overly bitter. The more satisfying thing is to take some from the bottom because that's when it gets a little mushier and then you get more of the mushroom sort of taste. And the bagong, if you're wondering, that shrimp paste doesn't really taste, you know, shrimpy at all. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's the magical sort of salty flavor that you can't put your finger on. That you can get from uh, regular salt. Okay. I think it's another hit for Lolito's Pinoy Kitchen. So stay tuned for another episode um, for the next video.